can God bless you. Praise the Lord. All our leaders and pastors of the Christian Association of Nigeria, PFN, and the, all the other blocks in Khan, we thank the Lord that he has brought us together so that we can impact our state, our nation, our world for Christ together in Jesus' name. And I pray that the impact of this minister's conference or the professionals, as well as the crusade in the evening, that the impact will reach far and wide in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that this morning, the Lord himself will reveal himself more and more than ever before to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy you are here, and I'm grateful to God I'm serving you this morning. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because we know you are here. And you have brought your servants, your sons and daughters, and ministers in the kingdom of God together so that you can impact our lives. Lord, I pray for those of us who are here at the Alpha location and all the ministers and the servants of God all over the world who are connecting with us in every way. Lord, I pray you reveal yourself more to everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that today we'll know you more. Amen. We'll appreciate you more. And we'll lift you up. And in our ministry, in our lives, in our families, and everything we do, you will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. As we come to our minister's professional conference at this time, we're looking at a personality, a divine personality. His name is Jesus. And wherever we are in the church, in the world, in the kingdom, in the office, in the marketplace, anywhere we find ourselves, he stands shoulder high. Because of who he is and because of the model, the example he is to every one of us. That's why as we come, we're going to be looking at Jesus. More about Jesus, what I know, and more of his grace, it would uh, make us to know. And more of his saving favor and saving grace and saving goodness, it will reveal to us as we learn about him. Are you a teacher? As a teacher? Are you a doctor? He is doctor. Are you um, an administrator, a manager? He is that and more than that too. And everything we need to know about how do we do our work? Why do we do our work? What's the vision? What's the power? What's the authority we find in Jesus? That's why it is time we have chosen the epistle of Paul to the Hebrews. And they will be going through everything as God gives us chance talking about Jesus and as you apply the message in your own life and you apply it in your own ministry, I pray you will grow higher and you'll go faster and you'll soar in the kingdom of God and in the work the Lord has placed in your hand in Jesus' name. Anytime I say in Jesus' name, I want an alpha location. Amen. Amen. Today I'm looking at chapters 1, 2, and 3. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. And in each of these chapters, I want you to see Jesus as he's revealed unto us. Hebrews chapter 3, chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers, by the prophets that's in the past by the prophets look at verse 2 now in verse 2 it says he has in these last days spoken unto us 
by his son the revelation coming from heaven now in this dispensation at this time comes through the son of god in these last days and these are the last hours of the last days and we need to know if god is going to speak to us to make progress to have dominion or to have anything on earth he speaks through his son whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the walls look at verse 3 there he tells us who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things all things in our lives all things in the church all things in the nation all things in every nation all things in the universe Christ the Son is the one that upholds all things by the word of his power and by the power of his word when he had himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of majesty on high look at chapter 2 and look at verse 9 he's still talking about Jesus but we see Jesus he said who is made a little lower than the angels higher than the angels from all eternity but when when he was come to the earth to take on the nature of man and to take us all our flesh it was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death it then crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man for every man he has an impute in your life for salvation and for service and for following after the Lord Christ is that one you cannot neglect whoever you are and wherever you are going it says he has tasted it for every man and then in verse 10 it says it says for it became him it befitted him for whom are all things think about that for whom are all things that means our lives our families our profession our service everything for whom for Christ are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory you want to grow it brings us to glory it brings us to a higher level it brings us to a higher honor it brings us to a higher sufficiency it brings us to what we ought to have and what the Lord has ordained for our lives it is through Christ it's great it is through Christ his mercy it is through Christ his love it is through Christ his power it is through Christ his sacrifice it brings each of us to the glory we ought to have to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings look at chapter 3 there and we're looking at verse 1 in chapter 3 verse 1 wherefore holy brethren is talking to people who have tasted the grace of God in salvation holy brethren is talking to people who have been washed and cleansed and redeemed and purchased by the blood of the lamb and he calls them by his particular name holy brethren I want you to notice that because you see in our world is after a believer has died after a servant of God has died they call him Saint Peter Saint Paul Saint John Saint Luke Saint Augustine Saint Stephen but while we're still here he gives us that title and he says you are saint and you can add your name there because we're holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling that is the calling we have it's not an earthly calling the calling we have is a heavenly calling calling actually the law talks about our calling and when you think about your calling and your service and what you have number one it's a high calling it is coming from on high number two it's a holy calling because it makes you holy and preserves you in holiness and then helps you to also transmit the calling of God and the holiness of God into many lives holy calling and then heavenly calling is coming from heaven to transform us make us heavenly and take us to heaven at last and so he says wherefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession Christ Jesus he says 
we should consider him. It says we should look at him. It says we should analyze his ministry, administration unto us. It says in whatever level we are and whatever place we find ourselves, we must consider Christ Jesus. Are you at a crossroad? Consider Christ. Are you having a problem? Consider Christ. Are you downtrodden? Consider Christ. Are you defeated? Consider Christ. Anything in your life, anything you are going through, any path and any pathway, any difficulty, any challenge, it calls us that if we want our problem solved and if we want to grow, if we want to fulfill our destiny, then raise one thing to do, consider Christ. Chapters 1, 2, and 3, I title this, Jesus, the source and the sustainer of our dominion. is the source of our dominion. I want to succeed is the source. I want to have dominion is the source. I want to have power is the source. I want to have healing is the source. I want to have the grace of God multiply in my life. He is the source and he is the sustainer. What he begins is able to continue. He is the sustainer of our dominion. And I pray through Christ, you'll have dominion. Yeah. I said you'll have dominion yeah. in your life, in your family, in your ministry, in your undertakings. You will have dominion and that dominion you have at this time will be sustained in Jesus' name. Yeah. Jesus, the source and the sustainer of our dominion. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, Jesus the Son, the source of our dominion. Number two, Jesus the Savior and sufficiency for our dominion. Number three, Jesus, our security for steadfastness in dominion. Every point has dominion because that's who Christ is. You cannot be married to Jesus, connected to Jesus, affiliated to Jesus, identified with Jesus, and not have dominion. Congratulations. I welcome you to a higher kind of dominion this morning in Jesus' name. Number one, Jesus, the Son and the source of our dominion. That's in chapter one and I divide that chapter one to three parts. Number one, perfect sacrifice for the sins of all. Number two, preeminent savior and sustainer of all and number three perpetual superiority and supremacy above angels we're looking at number one there number one perfect sacrifice for the sins of all look at uh, hebrews chapter one verse three there in verse three it tells us who being the brightness of his glory no other personality in heaven on earth has that description no angel no man no high priest either before or now has that description he is the brightness of his glory the express image of his person of divinity of the eternal god and is the one that upholds all things by the word of his power that is Christ Jesus he upholds everything everything on earth everything in the universe everything in the creation of God everything in heaven now tell me if somebody can uphold all things in heaven and earth all things in the whole universe if he can uphold all things he can uphold you and he will uphold you and there is no fear once you come to Christ and then you are serving Christ there's no fear that you will die in the middle of the journey never you will get to the end of your journey and whatever may be happening fear may come to your heart some insecurity may come to your heart will I will I will I be able the one who sustains us and the one who is the upholder of all things it will sustain you. Yeah. 
you rely on him you trust him you have faith in him you have confidence in him and whatsoever you ask in that name he will give unto you look at what it says here it says when he had by himself purged our sins he's done it already although there are people who have not got that purging that cleansing that conversion that salvation but it's already there that's why he has given us the message go tell them and tell every creature that everything heaven has to do everything god has to do everything christ has to do to forgive you to set you free to give you um, the ticket to heaven and to give you everything it will take that you get to heaven at last everything has been done he had by himself purged our sins and now he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high look at isaiah chapter 53 i'm reading from verse 6 there isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 it says all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the lord and the lord and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all have you noticed in that verse at the beginning all that includes you at the end all that includes you in the middle everyone everyone that means then what christ has done is for you it's for all the members of your family and it's for your neighbor some people say can i be saved i said yes when I be saved, I say yes. It says, How can you be so sure? I said, There is a verse that has your name in the Bible. It said me, my name. And then I open myself in verse 6. All we like sheep. I said, That's you there. You are one of the all. We've gone astray. We have turned everyone that's you right there to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all and therefore whosoever that whosoever is you he has your name already and Christ did that for you if you have not got it you will get it I said you will get it and then he tells us in first John chapter 3 verse 5 first John chapter 3 verse 5 and you know that he was manifested why one goal one purpose one reason he christ was manifested to take away our sins to take away our sins he's been waiting for you for a long time that you'll grant him the chance you'll grant him the liberty to take away the condemnation of your sin to take away the compelling power of your sin to take away the judgment of your sin and to take away the very presence of sin in your life and you know we know by experience we know by faith we know as we trust him that he christ was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin he'll accomplish it in every life in jesus name he has offered a perfect sacrifice for all your sins look at number two there number two is telling us in number two it talks about the preeminent savior and sustainer of all this is the savior preeminent above all above all the angels of heaven that's why it's um, it's unthinkable that you will leave the preeminent one and be praying to an angel and be praying in the name of an angel when you have the creator of the heavens and the earth and he has invited you and he gave you his name and he said whatsoever you ask in my name that i will do and then you go to you know an angel much more much lower he created a personality but now we're talking about his preeminence the preeminent savior and this and the sustainer 
of all. Look at that again in Hebrews chapter 1 and in verse 3 it tells us and being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding upholding all things upholding all people by the power of his word when he had by himself purged our sins he sat down what did he sit down he had completed the work the work that the father gave me to do i have finished your salvation finalized your sanctification finalized your sustenance sufficiency finalized my god will supply all your need according to his riches in glory because he's done everything now he can sit down he's sitting down at the right hand of majesty on high in chapter 7 of the hebrews hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 25 wherefore he is able he is able notice those three words he is able you're going through some things that brought tears in your eyes he is able you're wondering can i climb that mountain he is able you're wondering can i be an achiever he is able you're wondering can i succeed he is able you're wondering can i forget my failure of the past and come to a new success in my life he is able you're wondering where i failed before where I was defeated before can I rise up and run the race before me he is able in verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost save them to the uttermost he saved the worst of sinners he saved the most injurious of sinners he saved the most dangerous of sinners Saul of Tarsus he saved him and he saved him to the uttermost and you now you can place your life in the hands of Christ no matter the past he can erect a barrier between now and the past and everything you did in the past everywhere you've been in the past everything can be forgiven and forgotten i was waiting for a good amen, amen. he says he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him that's the only condition come unto god by him then it's a seen he ever liveth to make intercession for them look at verse 26 there in verse 26 for such and i priest became us why would i go to another priest when i have jesus the savior jesus the sustainer and he is already appointed by the father at the high priest what would i go to somebody else a human being a child of adam an offspring of adam and then i will say he is the sustainer or he is the high priest never because now christ is such an high priest he became us he defeated us oh he's holy no other one as holy as him harmless no other one as harmless as him undefiled no other person like him separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens can you show me any priest made higher than the heavens can you show me any pastor can you show me any founder of any church can you show me any founder of any religion made higher than the heavens jesus that's his name he will keep you to the end and everything the lord has appointed in heaven by his throne that you will accomplish i want to tell you not a judge will be deduced will be taken away from your achievement in jesus name i will make it i will make it by the grace of christ by the goodness of christ and by the favor of christ by the power of christ you i'm talking to somebody there you will make it in jesus name we're coming to number three here number three here is the perpetual superiority and supremacy above angels now follow me if a is greater than b 
and B is greater than C, then A is greater than C. Are you following? If, the, if Christ is greater than angels, angels are greater than men, then Christ is greater than all men. Do you agree with that? That's the reason why if you have been invited by the king of kings, you have been invited by the lord of lords, and he says, come, I give you my name. Anything you ask in that name, heaven will do it for you. Yeah. Why then will you go to a man and take that man in the place of Jesus? Christ is greater than angels, and angels are greater than men. And so Christ is greater than all men, in fact, all the men put together take all the men all the men from the beginning of creation from adam and eve unto abel unto cain unto enoch unto noah unto abraham and then unto peter unto paul put all of them together at all their ages together all men that ever lived their their age will not be infinite their age will still be a number and that number is going to be less than an eternal one and so christ is greater than all the men of the world of the past of the present of the future put together and that Christ is your savior and that Christ is your redeemer and that Christ is the one that makes you succeed is superior and is supreme above the angels look at chapter 1 Hebrews chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 4 being made so much better be made so much higher be made so much greater and be made so much holier than the angels and he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they now than they look at that lucifer and then michael and gabriel and all the other angels as great as they are and all the other regular angels and the cherubims and the seraphims all of them put together the ones that are still standing the holy angels and the ones that are falling put them all together he has obtained a greater name than they all thank god jesus is mine I said, thank God, Jesus is mine. And because he's mine, I just bypass the angels and I go to Jesus directly because he said, I can come directly. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest for everyone here. Rest for everyone over there. Restoration for everyone through the Lord Jesus Christ in your life today in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. It says in verse 5, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten. He said, Look at a special place, a special position, a special ministry. Unto which of the angels, any of them, have he ever said at any time, Thou art this, uh, this day have I begotten thee again? I will be to him a father. Father, and he shall be to me a son. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, and again, when he bringeth his first begotten into the world, he says, let all the angels, look at that, don't forget that word all, there was no angel that said, I'm higher than that, I'm greater than that, to worship Jesus, who is Jesus, all of them. There was no exception at all. Think how great Christ is, and think how mighty Christ is. He said, let all the angels of God worship him. And if all the angels of God are worshiping him, you will worship him. I said you will worship him and then the benefits of worship will come in your life in Jesus name look at Philippians chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 9 it says in Philippians chapter 2 here we're reading from verse 9 wherefore God also has highly exalted him 
look at those two words if you said God also has exalted him we understand but now the Spirit of God wants to tell us how high of the exaltation he has and it says God also has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name every name in name of angel name of man name of woman name of founder name of the religious person any name every name he has given him a name which is above every name and then in verse 10 he tells us he says that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow give me a good amen, amen. those of us who believe in christ now we bow voluntarily we bow submissively we bow and it's out of our volition we decide we know him he is savior we know him is the all in all and voluntarily we bow before him but there are people who stand rigid and they say never they will not bow to Jesus but you know every knee shall bow those who bow here you'll worship him in heaven those who do not bow here when they get to the other side they'll be forced to own him as the Lord of all eternity because it's the one that will decide where they spend eternity I pray you'll be wise I will be wise this is the time to bow the knee unto him because at the mention of his name every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and then in verse 11 he tells us and that every tongue every tongue every tongue now and forever every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of the father we're coming to point number two here point number two brings us to chapter two and is Jesus again wherever you go in the epistle to the Hebrews is Jesus that you meet there chapter 2 here is Jesus the Savior and sufficiency of for our dominion you want to have dominion is sufficient you don't have to go to your own secret call somewhere and damn your soul and say I'm looking for dominion you don't have to go to any secret power and say I'm looking for dominion that one well damn your soul and satan is a liar and all his followers are liars they will promise you a lot they say the sky is the limit but then you'll find hell becomes the limit at last that's the reason why if jesus christ is a savior if jesus christ is the sufficiency for our dominion that the reason you come to him so that you get everything you get from him without any condemnation without any damnation without any punishment and without suffering for what you have got i want to remind you that satan is not such a good giver that he loves you he'll give you dominion he'll give you whatever you want scot free if he gives anyone anything at all he has a way of taking the most precious thing out of that person's life that's why you abandon him and you come to jesus who went about doing good and healing all that are praise of the devil for god was with him he gives you without doing any harm to you he is Jesus the Savior. He is Jesus the sufficiency of our dominion. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, so great salvation from the gracious Savior. So great salvation from the gracious Savior. Number two, such granted sanctification through the glorious sanctifier. Such granted sanctification. He grants us and it's gratis and it's free such granted sanctification through the glory of sanctifier number three sufficient guaranteed soccer against the greatest supplanter let's look at number one there number one so great 
salvation it says in verse 3 there of it that's a hebrew chapter 2 verse 3 it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation you know sometimes when somebody has a counterfeit and he doesn't know his counterfeit currency when you give him the genuine it says, I have enough already. He has one million naira, one million dollars counterfeit. And then you give him a hundred naira, a thousand naira, or a thousand dollars genuine. It says, what am I doing with one thousand? What am I doing with ten thousand? I have one million. And the one million will not buy anything in a good market because it is counterfeit. There are people that neglect so great salvation because they have counterfeit salvation. The salvation they got from religion. The salvation they got from walking, washing with holy water. The salvation they got from burning candles. And the salvation they got by circumcision. And the salvation they got by keeping the Old Testament law. And that will not save anyone. And because of that counterfeit salvation, you present the so great salvation to them. And they neglect what thank God because you are here you have received Amen. I said you have received you will not reject or neglect the genuine for the counterfeit in your life in Jesus name it says how shall we escape so great salvation which have the force began to be spoken of by the Lord. You know, some time ago, I, I was speaking about salvation to somebody and about how to be born again. Oh, he says, yes, I understand. I see that, you know, the young people of nowadays, because they belong to a scripture union, they talk about salvation, but he says, I am following the Lord, and he never spoke about salvation. I said, are you sure about that? Then we opened this, and I said, look at this now. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord it was the Lord himself that spoke about that he told Nicodemus ye must be born again that's not a sure that's not deep life that's not a gospel church this is Christ himself the upholder of all things that said ye must be born again it is Christ that said except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of of God it is the salvation spoken of by the Lord and uh, you know if you're going to succeed in life you need his salvation you need his support you need his succor you need his power you need his upholding he will uphold you in Jesus name show me a person this one is a professional without Christ this one is a professional with Christ the professional with Christ is better any day any time in any profession because the power of heaven will help you in your profession when you have Christ so great salvation spoken of by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him that the salvation and then he says spoken unto us by them that heard him look at Romans chapter 10 reading from verse 9 Romans chapter 10 we're looking at verse 9 it says that if thou that's personal if thou that's singular if you in person you cannot get this by proxy you can get a lot of things by proxy what i mean is you want a car you can say go and get a car for me and never get to that place where they buy the car you can get land by proxy go and get the land for me and without ever getting there you can get a lot of things by proxy but salvation eternal life being born again you have to get it yourself just like nobody can eat for you 
nobody can breathe for you and nobody can drink water for you whatever water they drink is for themselves and whatever life they have is for themselves if you're going to have life if you're going to have the air that will sustain your life you must breathe by yourself the same thing with salvation no other person can get it for you mama cannot get it for you papa cannot get it for you brother sister cannot get it for you your pastor cannot get salvation for you and the pastor cannot say don't worry just be coming to my church and then i'm in touch with heaven i get that salvation for you it is personal if you've never got it personally if somebody has been telling you i'll get it for you i'll get it for you is the act deceiver and you want to wake up you don't want to sleep with a deceiver deceiving your life look at it now in verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth not with another person's mouth with your own mouth with thy mouth that the lord that the lord jesus the lord is jesus is lord and shall believe in thine heart your another heart cannot get it for you believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved and then in verse 10 it tells us in verse 10 for what the heart man one man man believeth unto righteousness hey, you, nobody can have that righteousness for you don't worry i am righteous i'm your pastor i'm your leader and my righteousness will pass for everyone that's not true that's not true i'm healthy don't worry about your health you can do whatever you want with your body my health is sufficient for you that's not right don't worry i have a sound mind and i have a strong body and that is for everyone no it's just for yourself whatever level of health you have or strength you have or power you have of knowledge you have it is what you have for yourself the same thing with salvation it is what you have for yourself so great salvation from the gracious savior it says for well, the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth your own mouth confession is made unto salvation let's look at number two there number two is such is such guaranteed sanctification through the glorious sanctifier it tells us in hebrews chapter hebrews chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 9 it says but you will see Jesus. You have to see him for yourself as your savior. See him for yourself as sanctifier. We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels because of coming to take our sin for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he he only with no other man is support by the grace of God should taste death for every man there are many people that have died there are different kinds of death there's the matter that is fighting for a cause and he's saying i must follow this through and eventually they kill him that's a matter there are people that die natural death that's them that's for themselves by themselves but christ he didn't die as a matter he didn't die as a sinner he didn't die as a guilty person he died as our substitute he died as your substitute that's the reason why the death of christ is different from the death of any other person look at Stephen. Stephen was stoned to death that death he didn't die as a substitute as a savior he died as a matter there's a difference but jesus christ made lower than the angels for the suffering of death look at this that by the grace of god he should taste death for every man and then it says in verse 10 in verse 10 it tells us for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory 
bringing many sons to glory. The death of Stephen did not bring by that death many sons, many daughters, many people to glory. And you might have it about, you might have heard about other people that have died. Maybe they died in righteousness, like Abel. Abel died as a righteous man, but that just or the fact that he alone died and went to heaven. That death did not bring many sons to glory. But come to Christ, it says that by whom all things in bringing many sons to glory. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. And then in verse 11, it tells us and it says for both he that sanctifieth. You see that verb, continuous things. He's sanctified people in the past. He's sanctifying people now. He'll keep on sanctifying people and preparing them, getting them ready for heaven. He that sanctified and they who are sanctified. They who are sanctified. There are people who are talking about sanctification as if it's um, ongoing. He's sanctifying us. But he never finishes. We're never really completely, perfectly sanctified. We're being sanctified. They say, as we read the Bible, that knowledge is sanctifying us. As we attend worship service, all that sanctifying us. And as we do good here and do good here, all that gradual, gradual, slow sanctification, it never ends, it's never accomplished, and it is never fulfilled. Look at this. It says both he that sanctified, and they who are sanctified, period, sanctified. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And then it says sanctified are all of one. For which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. It says you are saved. You are sanctified, and now I can call you brethren. I put, I impart my righteousness unto you. I impart my sanctification unto you. I impart my purity unto you. And now we can identify together. Let's come to number three here. Number three, we're looking at sufficient, guaranteed soccer against the greatest supplanter. The devil is the supplanter. He will not cut you. He will not get you. No matter his power and no matter his wiles, his strategy and no matter his cunning craftiness, if he gets to you anytime, the Lord will succor you. The Lord will support you. The Lord will sustain you. He will not catch me. He will not catch me. Uh, have you noticed that scripture? It says the devil as a running lion, not really running lion, as a running lion is counterfeit after Calvary, that Satan to you is a counterfeit. I didn't hear you, amen. amen. He said he's going about seeking whom he may devour. If he is able to devour everybody, finish everybody, conquer everybody, defeat everybody, swallow up everybody, how is he going about seeking whom he may devour? And then the next verse says, whom you receive steadfast in the faith and they will flee from you. I'm talking to somebody now. That Satan will flee from you. Their power will flee from you. You will conquer. I will conquer. Sufficient, guaranteed succor against the greatest supplanter. Look at Hebrews there. I'm reading from chapter 2. And we're looking at verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2. And we're looking at verse 14. It says, For as much, uh, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same that through death he might. You know the next word then. Tell me the next word. Tell me out aloud. You know, there are people they wrestle 
in every prayer was Satan. And he said, this Satan is too much for them. And they wrestle, and they pray, and they fast, and they command, and they decree, and they do a lot, and they go to night vigil. Everything is about Satan. They mention Satan more times than they mention Jesus. They mention the tempter more times than they mention the one who gives us triumph. It's like the devil is still as strong as it was before Calvary. But at Calvary, Jesus gave him a spiritual knockout and knockdown. And he says now that he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil. Destroyed in your life. Destroyed out of your life. That when you are looking for where is he, where is he, where is he, he troubled me yesterday and he threatened me, he was coming back today. The Lord has taken care of him yeah. in your life, in your family, yeah. in your body, yeah. and in everything that concerns you. Destroyed out of your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Underline that word in your Bible that he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil look at verse 15 there in verse 15 and deliver them who through fear of death deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage there are some people before they came to know christ they were in a particular dungeon that they call religion they call a place of worship and they were doing some occultic uh, dark things there and as they hear the gospel they want to come out and the man there i don't know what to, what to call his name uh, the leader there i don't know what a title to give him he says come i hear that you are trying to go to the gospel go to a bible believing church go to a place where they study the Bible. Here they don't study the Bible, but I want to tell you, if you leave anything you got here before, number one, our dear master, the devil, will take everything from you. And then not only that, your life, whatever happens to you, if you leave this a place of darkness, if you leave this secret cult, whatever happens to you, take care because that mighty power will get you. It's a lie. I said it's a lie. And they tie people down with a lie. Remember that Jesus Christ is the one that upholds the whole universe. Come out from darkness and come into light. It will uphold you. It will sustain you. And that, you know, for, because of fear, for fear of death, they're all their lifetime subject unto bondage. Look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, For verily he, Christ, took part, took not of uh, the, took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him of the seed of Abraham. Verse 17. In verse 17, he tells us here, he says, Therefore, in all things, he behooved and befitted him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. It's the one that reconciles us to God. And when he reconciles you to God, there is no loophole. You are truly and perfectly reconciled unto God. Look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, he tells us, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. He is able. Those are the three words again. He is able. On your behalf, he is able. At any crossroad, he is able. Before the tempter, before the temptress, he is able. He said he's able to succor. That's the word right there. He's able to help. He's able to sustain. He's able to support them that are tempted. He will uphold you. Yeah. 
I said it will uphold you. If you have been afraid, can I stand? Well, if you are thinking of only your own strength by yourself, I doubt if you can stand. But if Christ be for you, who can be against you? Nay, in all these things, you will be more than a conqueror. I said you will be more than a conqueror and every day the victory of yesterday will be higher than the victory of yesterday and the victory of tomorrow will be greater and higher than the victory of today and the victory of next month will be greater than the victory of this month and in your life will be going higher and higher greater and greater swelling above in the strength of the Lord in Jesus name I was talking about you and I didn't hear your response very well. Yeah. You will overcome in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number three now. And this is chapter three of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter three. And look at chapter one, chapter three, verse one. It says in Hebrews chapter three, looking at verse one, it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, holy brethren, holy brethren. Uh, you know, sometimes some people go around. I don't want him, I don't want to stand beside them. And uh, you know, when they are preaching, they'll say, Church, I'm not better than you are. I don't know about that. What if a teacher comes before his class and then he wants to teach those students preparing them for school search and then he says, students, I want to tell you, I don't have more knowledge, more revelation, more understanding than you have. The students will say, eh, sir, go and resign. Because you cannot prepare us for the exam we are preparing for. You are not better than us. You don't have more knowledge than we have. Go and resign. What if um, you know, a lecturer at the university will come? The, the student just came for the first time. And this is the first class. And then the teacher came and he said, uh, you know, uh, students, uh, welcome. I'm sent here by the Senate to be your lecturer. But I want to tell you between you and I that uh, actually my certificate is not good enough. My certificate is not genuine. I want one gold my way through to have the circuit and to be honest with you I don't have more knowledge than you have the student body will write to their student union and then they'll get that lecturer out of the place a preacher that comes to tell us hey church hey members of the church I want to tell you I'm still a sinner I'm a sinner like you quit the pulpit you need to have that experience that makes you that qualifies you to be able to talk to other people wherefore holy brethren holy pastors holy evangelists holy apostle and holy prophet and holy teacher we have to have the experience we are demonstrating before other people we are introducing before other people wherefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling partakers of the heavenly calling the calling we have is not because uh, your mother said you know my son if I were a man, I would be a pastor. And I really want you to be a pastor. What will make me happy in my life is that I see you as a, as a preacher. And then he'll mention a particular pastor. Do you hear about that pastor? And then he goes about his preaching the gospel. I want you to be like that. If you get into the ministry, just because mama said, I want you to be a pastor, to be a preacher, you have earthly calling. Earthly calling. If you're going to have a real call, it comes from heaven. It says, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, of our profession, Christ Jesus. As you are thinking of salvation, you consider Christ. Sanctification, you consider Christ. Baptism with the Holy Ghost, you consider Christ. Service, you consider Christ. Progress, you consider Christ. Growth, you consider Christ. Consider Christ. 
the author and the finisher of our faith, the apostle and the high priest of our profession. Number three here, Jesus, our security for steadfastness in dominion. Three things we're looking at. Number one, Christ, the sovereign over his holy household. Number two, Christ likeness was submission without hardened hearts. Number three, consecration and steadfastness for the heavenly heritage. Let's look at number one there. Number one there, we see Christ, the sovereign and over his holy household and look at chapter 3 of hebrews and we're looking at verse 6 in chapter 3 and verse 6 it says but christ as a son over his own house over his own house when somebody is born again the lord is building a mighty temple destined for heaven and he is a block he is a block she is a block she is a block and then each of those blocks are brought in their proper place to build a temple and habitation for the lord most high and so christ is the sovereign is the ruler he is the captain, he is the landlord over that temple whose house we are. If we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm until the end, he doesn't want us oscillating between the Savior and Satan. It says, I'd rather have you cold or hot. I don't want you lukewarm. I don't want you here and there, there and here. You want to be for Christ? Be for Christ. Don't stay with Christ on Sunday. And then on Monday, you go back to the old devil. And then on maybe a weekday, you go back to church and say, Jesus, I'm here again, and I'm for you. And then on Sunday, I'm here again, I'm back, I'm for you. He doesn't want you oscillating and going here and there. He wants whose house we are. If we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of our hope firm until the end i pray the lord will sustain you sustain me and sustain all of us together in jesus name yeah. look at ephesians chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 19 ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints fellow citizens with the saints when he brings us into the kingdom he makes us fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says and we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone verse 21 it says in whom all the building freely framed together all the building that block that block now a pile of blocks is not a building some people say all i want is to get saved i don't want to be part of any church i don't want to be part of any fellowship all i want to do is get saved and then i can listen to good messages from preachers over the radio or social media but i'll never be part of any church you say why they say because no church is perfect it's because all those people in the church were at different levels. They are new converts. They don't know everything they ought to know. And there are people who are slow in growth. They are growing, but they are slow. That's why the church is not perfect. And you yourself, you are not perfect. But the point is this. If you say as a block outside, 
you'll never be part of the building and the lord is not coming for you know those people that separate themselves isolated they isolated there is coming for the holy habitation i pray you're a part of the holy habitation in jesus name not so proud I'm better than all the pastors in all the churches. I'm better and I see farther than everybody. Therefore, I cannot be part of any church. That's pride coming. The Lord has given to the church first apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastor teacher for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of all the people of God till we all come in the unity of faith unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of Christ he has given uh, those ministers not to the blocks that are scattered everywhere he gave them to the church the people that join the holy habitation welcome you have a part of his building in Jesus' name. Groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at Christ likeness, ways of mission without in the hearts. It tells us in chapter 3 of Hebrews, reading from verse 12, Hebrews chapter 3, we're looking at verse 12. It says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. There is a devil out there and if you travel far away from Christ you can get so near to him he can put the hook in your neck and he can put it on your feet and then begin to drag you. That's why it says it's in your hand. You want to abide? I will abide. You want to stay, I will stay. You want to endure to the end, I will endure unto the end. Talk for yourself now. Amen. You'll endure in Jesus' name. That's why it says, take heed. It's not everything your eyes see that you go, that you say, I want to get nearer, I want to go and see that thing. It's not everything other people are drinking. I, I want to see how it tastes. Somebody said, how do you know it's poison when well, you have never drunk it? If you take it, then you'll be able to tell it is poison. My friend, when you drink poison, you'll not be alive to tell, to come and tell us that it was poison before you are gone. Don't you see the label on that bottle and they say that is poison? Don't you see the signboard that gets to that arena and they say that is you know, a place of, uh, you know, of a spiritual whatever kind of death? You see the signboard already and you see the people that by God's grace they have been delivered and they came out. Are you going to follow the same route and go there? Take it to yourself. When you see there's danger there I will take heed I said I will take heed you see the people that are asking for deliverance you know where they are coming from you see the people that are asking all my strength is gone all my money is gone everything I got in life is gone they took everything away from me and I escaped by the skin of my teeth and you see them crying and running back and then you want to go to where they have gone you will not go there Amen. I will not go there Take it therefore, brethren, holy brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Look at verse 13. It says in verse 13, but exhort one another, exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest at any time any of you should be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. The Lord will soften your heart. I said the Lord will soften your heart. You know, sometimes uh, people are ignorant. They, well, they, they brag. They say, you know, I'm not a soft person. I'm not a soft fish. I know myself. And even the pastor knows me that I am a tough fellow. 
they know that they can talk to other people counsel other people teach other people and they'll say yes sir. and they go on their knees and cry and weep and return to the lord but the pastor knows i am not like that and they know that if they're going to get me at all they have to labor very hard because i have a hard heart it's like you know, your child coming back from school and you say my child how did you learn at school today he said daddy i didn't tell you this before in my class everybody knows i am the troublemaker and they know i am tall even the teacher if he's teaching anything and writing something on the board and he's saying have you copied that have you written that when it gets to me he just looks at me he fears me and then he passes by you say my son that's the way you're at school he said daddy i'm telling you that no teacher no headmaster no principal can confront me i am tough i am hard your father will probably cry for you because he knows you'll not take any certificate out of that school the same thing in the church somebody says i'm tough i'm hard they can preach to other people and the preacher sometimes he will come personal he'll go to an individual and he'll say my friend why don't you repent my friend why don't you turn and i'm sitting there i'm looking at him from the corner of my eyes whether i will ever get to me but he knows he never will approach me when he gets to me he just passes by because he knows i am tough i am hard i pity you heaven is for those whose hearts have been softened their hearts have been turned around and when they hear the word of god they're so tender and they give in to the word of god that's why it says exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin i will not be hardened I will not be hardened and the word of God will penetrate our hearts in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Look at number three here number three here consecration and steadfastness for the heavenly heritage Look at verse 14 in verse 14 it says for we are made partakers of Christ. What an honor. We are made partakers of Christ. What a privilege. We are made partakers of Christ. What a choice heaven has made of you. Heaven has made of me. And many other people have lost this opportunity. But he gave you this opportunity and said we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. There is a man that has gone through schooling, primary, got certificate, secondary, got certificate, university, got certificate, and he had good grades. But the only point is he didn't keep his certificates. And now he wants to get a job and he wants to go to a high place and he say what's your qualification and he leaves the qualification and true true he got the qualification they say all right go and bring the original he can't find the original he's careless he's been packing from house to house house to house and then he's searching and searching he doesn't know did i put it inside a book did i put it somewhere in a shelf did i forget it somewhere he cannot find certificate and the word of mouth alone cannot tell that you have the proper the appropriate certificate what are you going to do you're going to miss a lot in your life keep those certificates now the certificate for heaven our salvation our experience of the lord our standing with the lord we cannot be careless with that and be following after religion and following after activities and then forget salvation and drop salvation and forget our experience of linking up with the lord we are made partakers 
of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end you will endure until the end yes. your confidence in the lord your experience of the lord nobody will take away from you and it is as we begin like this with christ christ our savior christ our substitute christ our sovereign christ our sustainer christ our succor and christ our power that makes us steadfast unto the end is as we continue dominion will come in our lives everything that will have brought you down the lord will cancel from your life this morning anything that will defeat your life the lord will cancel in jesus name and they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they will mount up i'm talking about you there they will mount up like wings as eagles you will run you will not be tired you will walk and you will not faint it's time for the believer it's time for the minister it's time for the professional to stand on the rock of ages and to strand in the strength of the Lord and enjoy present dominion and enjoy perpetual dominion and enjoy perfect dominion i welcome every one of you this morning to the place of prayer where everything you need to succeed and you need to conquer and you need to have dominion will be given unto you this morning what are you there why don't you stand up and say lord here i am i come here i am i come recharge that battery refill that container and renew that strength in your life that are the lord has called you and he calls you to dominion you will have this dominion today present every day perpetual and to the end of your life perfect dominion open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer